Welcome back to QOTD, the real talk question of the day show starring fans like you. And you can be on the air with us by recording your own video answers to our awesome daily questions. So this week we've been talking about celebrities, the famous figures we love, and our own rises to fame. So you can vote for your favorite answers to each question in chat to determine who will be this week's QOTD champion. So let's begin with your answers to this week's first QOTD, which was Friday's question of the day. Who's your first celebrity crush? My time when I was like first starting to think about like celebs uh, was in the 70s. And in the 70s, it was like there was Carrie Fisher. There was, uh, oh yeah, there's this one, right? That's Catherine Bach. She is the inventor of the, um, the the Daisy Duke, which I'm sure that you sport all the time. Oh, my God. The PowerPoint presentation. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I've been working on that one all day. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> but how so, about you guys? I mean, it's totally different, like, as time goes on. I mean, right. like, when you look at mine, doesn't it seem sort of quaint? I always loved, like, the rock stars. So I loved Sean Cassidy and then all the way up to, like, Bon Jovi when mm -hmm. I was, you know, in high school and college. So I always liked the uh, the long, ha feathered hair rocker guy. Oh, know? the bad boy edge of John Bon Jovi. Yeah. And Jersey's Eddie. own John Bon Jovi. Yes. Yes. The namesake for the, uh, I think there's a bon, John Bon Jovi uh, rest stop on the New Jersey Turnpike. So. Is there really? <laughs> That's and when you someone know. went to Syracuse, so shout out to upstate New York too. But I think those are two great celebrity crushes, but we also have a lot of really great celebrity crushes from fans throughout the week. So we turn it over to you fans. Who was your first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush throwing it back to uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, was Jonathan Taylor Thomas, especially when he starred in Home Improvement with Tim Allen. Uh, unfortunately, I'm now in a relationship with a woman, so don't think it would have worked out in the long run, but still have a, a definite soft spot for JTT. He's cutie. Yeah, I mean, he's still cute. It doesn't take away from it. Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill, since before I could remember. She loves a dad bod. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> my first celebrity crush was Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement. And I had my entire bedroom wall just like completely covered in photos and things that I got from magazines that I convinced my parents to buy. And <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't admitted this, but I may have been known for kissing a poster or two of my time. Um, <laughs> good old. 12-year-old tubs. <laughs> I would have to say was Harrison Ford. Uh, mm -hmm. What Lies Beneath, he's laying in the bed with Michelle Pfeiffer. He's kind of like sitting there on his laptop or reading a book or something. And I don't know how old he was there, probably mid-40s or 50s, but dude was ripped. And I was, kinda, I was like, uh, okay, I like See, that. See, I, I totally get it. Harrison Ford, he's rugged, he's funny, he's, you know, just has an authenticness to him, mm -hmm. which is very funny because he can only do one character, but that character is very attractive. So my first celebrity crush was um, Matty B. Raps. And at the time, I think he was a really popular person for kids that age to have a crush on. So, yeah, I <laughs> don't think it's very unordinary. Sorry, I was stretching because I think I need to jump in here and give some context. <laughs> Maddie B. Raps is a like YouTube musician celebrity. And so like I, I know that suddenly just made me feel like I gained like seven years because there's now young adults who had crushes on internet celebrities. Right. <laughs> well, it is time for us to vote. There's some tough choices in here. Who is a celebrity that you agree would have been your celebrity crush if you were thinking about it? Is this a certain somebody from Home Improvement? I think you know who I'm talking about. Is it some internet musical child star, I suppose? <laughs> who knows? Is it the great Harrison Ford star of screen? Probably also of stage. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Be a winner. Who's it going to be? Jonathan Taylor Thomas and the posters on the wall for tabs. She, she kissed the poster. She did. <laughs> I love that. 
beautiful. Oh, that's so and cool. I want to thank her for just like fessing up about that. Mm -hmm. It's like good. Yeah. Because you know, we're all come on. We've all kissed a picture. Yeah. Have you ever kissed a picture? Of course you've kissed a picture. Everybody's kissed a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we appreciate you like saying it in public and giving us the representation and having the courage to like say something, say the quiet part out loud. Yeah, That's it, right. it makes it possible for the rest of us. <laughs> yes. oh, so good. Well, thank you so much, Tabitha. This was an incredible answer. But now, fans, it's time we turn it over to you to answer our poll. Which of these celebrities was your first crush? Was it Scarlett Johansson, Michael B. Jordan, Brad Pitt, or Halle Berry? Ooh, hmm. was... where's, where's Matt Damon? Right. I almost forgot about Brad Pitt, though. He was so, so, so cute. Yeah. Back, back in the day. Oh, oh wow. Halle Berry. So, Halle Berry is so beautiful. Yes. And slinky. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's like she's like a jet fighter. And I don't mean like a jet fighter pilot. I mean like the plane. She's just sleek. Was powerful. she Catwoman? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. She was the, you know, and, and there's a legacy there too. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer and mm -hmm. Eartha, not Eartha, was it Eartha Kitt? Who yeah. was the original one? Yeah. I mean, they're all so gorgeous. But yeah, but Halle Berry, man, she, she definitely like stood toe to toe with the rest of them. She's a killer crush. Yeah. Who's next? Who is the next Catwoman? I think it's um Anne Hathaway. Mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, and, and she she's obviously very pretty, but I don't think that she's got the. Come on, Michelle Pfeiffer. Fair point. Fair point. Jessica Lang, maybe. Linda Carter, maybe. Anne Hathaway. <laughs> She sang in Les Mis as she really shaved her head. Like, this is a multi, multi talented actor. I'm not saying she's not talented. I'm just saying that she, she can't go Mach 6. She's not slinky enough. Was she's that not sleek you? enough, like, like a perfect piece of German engineering. <laughs> oh my God. All right. <laughs> Next question. Let's go. <laughs> well, what celebrity would you want on your zombie apocalypse survivor squad? Thank goodness. We're, we're making it real now. Yeah. That's we're going to really switch gears with this one. Oh, yeah. So I've actually, I've given this one some thought. And I have, so I have an app recommendation to talk about later that has to do with this question. Okay. But I was thinking, I think a lot of people would go for like the brains or the brawn. I would go for someone who is fast because especially if it's like fast zombies, you want someone who can sprint. So I'm going to do uh Shakari Richardson, that like Olympic sprinter who's like constantly in the news. Cause she's fast. Oh, okay. But you're it familiar with the whole concept about like when you're hiking and a bear attacks, who do you want by your side? It's someone who's not as fast as you. <laughs> right. And so the th same thing may apply here. That's true. That's Maybe what you really want is like a Jack Black. Somebody yeah. who's delicious looking and not that fast. <laughs> and with a body that Taylor could get on board with. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, well, I think that that's a very good point, actually. And I think we have an, um, some answers like that where it's like, give someone, get, yeah. uh, sacrifice someone else. I want to live. <laughs> so I think we can get into it. So fans... I pose the question to you. Who is on your celebrity zombie survival squad? I would want The Rock to be with me during the apocalypse because he's a former wrestler, so he knows how to fight. And he's in a whole bunch of action movies, so hopefully he's learned from those movies how to fight zombies. And plus, he's really strong, so if, we were, if anyone's ever to get injured, he could carry us. And plus, he's smoking hot, so... You know, yeah. gives you a little, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, it gives you a will to survive, I think. Uh -huh. But you're hoping <laughs> that everybody else is knocked off and it's just the two of you in Absolutely. the end. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about this for a while and my first obvious answer was The Rock. It's like clearly he's smart, he's athletic, he's talented, he knows his stunts, whatever, he can protect himself. But the longer I thought, it's like, surely I have to pick Elon Musk. He has tons of resources, tons of people on his side, and he's already crazy enough to believe it's going to happen anyway. 
He's got a bag of psilocybin in case things really go bad, you know. (laughs) Um, Is that even a question? Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, he's literally everything. So I think she's kind of on your team with this one, Trish. She's just hoping everybody else is going to be killed. Because Benedict Cumberbatch, I don't know, maybe he's super intelligent. He was Sherlock Holmes, among other things, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So... Maybe you could solve them. I'd want Xena warrior princess because she's fierce and, you know, she's pretty well cut. I'm also dating myself here. <laughs> I think lots of generations know who Xena warrior princess was. Yeah. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. She has that sword. Was she a, a giant, Xena? Was she like a I mean, she was big. But she wasn't a giant. She, she was wasn't just, an Amazon. That was the question I was trying to ask. No. Was she an Amazon? I right. mean, she wasn't like 30 feet tall. She was normal size, but she was, you know, powerful. Right. Well, she she might have been an Amazon, but it was a it was a Greek mythic television series. So she would often run into Hercules. But okay. so yeah, Amazons, I guess, are a part of that mythos. So yeah. I'm gonna just say yes, Trish. Thank you. <laughs> I would have to pick Chris Hemsworth. Um, one, he's Thor, so he could probably figure that out. Uh, two, if I'm going to die in a zombie apocalypse, I want the last thing that I look at to be Chris Hemsworth. All right, Harrison Ford or Chris Hemsworth? Ooh. I'm just saying. That's like Sophie's choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could. <laughs> I know. That's a tough one. I'm going to go with him. To be honest, I want Dwayne The Rock Johnson on my uh, zombie apocalypse squad. He's very big. He can move objects if we ever get stuck. He could probably take a few zombies. And end of the day, I feel like I could outrun him if need be. And, uh, you know, he'll probably probably keep the zombies filled up for a little bit. Yeah. Maybe now. But if he was like NFL speed once upon a time, you want, you want, you want the, the aged rock. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Well, it's time to vote. You can vote in the chat by typing vote space and the number of whoever it was you thought that you were the best, but there was a lot of rocks in here, right? Yeah, three that rocks. Was one, six, and I think two. One, two, and six. They all had different reasons, but they all came down for Dwayne The Rock Johnson, former NFL star, but not as fast as he once was. But yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, Xena Warrior Princess, Chris Hemsworth, also good choices. Yeah, I will say more than half of our answers with Rock. Ah, but Christina with Xena Warrior Princess, also an Amazon. Fun fact. <laughs> Not Christina, but Xena. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. She's got a fierce look too. <laughs> Shouldn't look very tall though. Hmm. But congratulations, yeah. Christina. Yeah, very incredible answer. Well, now I think it's time we turn it over to the viewers because we have yet another poll. So we're ta- asking what celebrity would you want in your zombie apocalypse squad? Is it someone muscular like The Rock? Someone smart like Neil deGrasse Tyson? Someone funny like Jayla? Or a weapons master like um, Danny Guerrero? I think she was on um, um, Walking Dead. Well, it, that The Rock wins yeah. every time. People rock rock, rock, rock beats paper, scissors, and Danny Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> but I would go with the weapons master because the weapons master is a way of like multiplying your effectiveness because she could arm everybody, you mm-hmm. know, and then everybody would be deadly. Hey, have you ever seen the movie? Uh, gosh, yeah. there was this really funny, not zombie land, but there's another zombie movie with Simon Pegg. Anyway, they get into this one thing where they, they start throwing record albums at the zombies. And it turns out that if you get a good 33 or even better, a 78, like spitting fast enough, you can you can do in a zombie. <laughs> Hard to aim, though, if you've ever if you've ever thrown a record album. Killing you guys know what me. record albums are? JJ, you yeah. know what a record album is? It's just like the, the big flat disc. The right? big flat disc, <laughs> right? But not, not those, because those are CDs. It's the big ones. They're black. They look like a licorice pizza. <laughs> don't worry i've, I've seen I, my dad has a record collection so i've i've I, i've seen one a couple of times a handful 
Uh, well, this was an incredible question. Um, well, I'm going to say we move on to the next question. Let's go. Keep the train rolling. The next question we asked fans was, if you could start a celebrity book club, who's in it and what are you reading? Um, for me, that's really funny that somebody mentioned Jack Black earlier because I don't need a big club. I, I'll take Jack Black and Barack Obama. So Ooh. Black Jack, because he's so fun and hilarious and cute. Am I right, Taylor? Um, but he'll make even the most boring subject like sci-fi actually interesting to me. And I want Barack Obama because every year he releases this list of like what he's read throughout the year and his best recommendations for intriguing and inspiring books. So I think he puts a lot of thought and research into great stories and like thoughtful works of art. Hmm. Okay. But no, not Oprah because she, she does the same thing. Oprah does the same thing, but you know, she's kind of overdone. Yeah. Yeah. I what do you think? Know. Martha Stewart, maybe? She's probably reading something good, something interesting. Ooh, cookbook. She had a lot of time when she was in prison to like, like catch up on her reading. <laughs> now she's got her, her pulpit again. She can tell us what she read. I she like passed that. the time. I like that. I'd like to know her favorite cookbooks of all time. I'd like to go through those with her. I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, her and Snoop Dogg. That, that, no, that's a book club. Oh. That would be a great book club. But they could also be your celebrity parents. That's true. That's true. And that might be a better choice. I'm not sure how much Snoop reads. I'm not sure if he's big in the literal. Ouch. I don't know. He's he's like he's got a lot of thoughtful things to say. He has a lot of funny things to say. And I think he's a great lyricist. I'm just not sure how interested he would be into getting in the thick of, you know, plot lines and such. Maybe. Right. Let me know, Snoop. Hit us up in chat. We'll what see, you we'll reading? See. What you reading? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, I think we have some similarly incredible book club answers from fans from throughout the week. So, Trish, that was an incredible answer. Let's see if anyone else has one that's good as yours. Who's in your celebrity book club, fans? What celebrity would you like to have in your book club? As a Green Bay Packers fan, I would like our former beloved quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, to be in my book club. He used to do something like that back in Green Bay when he used to live there. Now that my man's injured, he's got more time. We could start up a book club, dude. Let's do it. And what am I reading right now? It's a book called In the Best Interests. Got this from a buddy of mine named Tim Hind. Self-published and actually, it's a very good read. So check it out. In the Best Interest, Tim Hind. Aaron Rodgers, hit me up for a book club. Link. Uh, you ever read the book The Martian? That started off as a kind of a self-published. Oh, did it really? Book. Yeah. It was really, really interesting. And then, then ultimately it got picked up by a big publisher, of course. Do you know? I don't know if you remember this. Yes. You told me a long time ago that was your favorite book. And I bought it for my daughter, who is sophomore year at Penn. And it is still her all-time favorite book. She still has it. Scores yeah. again. Yeah, so it is proven his uh, idea that the Martian is. Maybe I should have a book club. Maybe you guys want to be in my book club. I would be in your book club. Oh, yeah. Same. Stories with Scotch is what I think your book <laughs> exactly. club would be. So Galaxy and Chat just start talking about Lord of the Rings. So that's what they're, they're reading right now. And I got to say that that's a book that I would have to say that I have read 25 times. The only book that I've read more than Lord of the Rings is the Bible. Do wow. you find more interesting things the more you read lord of the rings like do you well yeah i mean the, yeah. the use of language is is just stunning tolkien tolkien like really got language in a way that other for other writers it's a tool for for him uh, it was the art it was what the whole point of the book was was language he's an amazing writer so you know there's elves and dwarves and all that sort of stuff but but it was really about the use of language the creation of languages and all that sort of stuff but I think that I perhaps have outed myself right there as a full-on geek, but it's also a great book. I could do a book club that was just Lord of the Rings, just Tolkien. We just, we just we're just going to read Tolkien stuff again and again. I bet you'd have a big club. Yeah. What yeah. Do you say, Galaxy. You ready? <laughs> oh yeah. Also, I think it's funny how you were just like you just now have outed yourself as a geek, as if you haven't <laughs> repeatedly said that you have written the Klingon national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that doesn't come from nothing. <laughs> you got to start off by reading Lord of the Rings and Percy Jackson and Narnia. I'm not That's there. Hi, could start a celebrity book club. I think I'd want to do one with Hayao Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli because he made a movie called The House Moving Castle based on a book called The House Moving Castle. And I would love to look at the book with him and see what his process was in adapting it because I think that's kind of one of the best adaptations from book to movie I've ever seen. So not so much of a book club as a, an in-depth interview. Yeah. Interesting. I like it. I don't know a lot of celebrity. I know the types of celebrity. Like the super stone dog and the type. And then it would be the physicists and the mathematicians like Neil deGrasse Tyson. And then the third type would be like philosophers like uh, Slavoj Žižek. And then they just read whatever and then go at it with debate. But it's not really a debate. If, if like one of them is a mathematician, one of them is a philosopher, I think that they're going to be like talking like this. You just got to get two philosophers or two mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I saw Alicia's answer earlier in the, the, at the beginning he talked about <laughs> speaking of Snoop Dogg stoners. Oh. So he wants a, a stoner, a philosopher, a musician and a mathematician and a mathematician. All right. Okay. Be, you know, yeah, it wouldn't be a debate. Everybody would bring something else to it. Yeah. Who That's a good Snoop? discussion. Yeah. Well, we're going to start with reading my favorite book of all time, which is The Hobbit. And I don't know everyone who would, I would want in the book club, but I definitely would want Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman because those two are hilarious. To, oh, maybe Jake Gyllenhaal, too. Those three, pretty funny together. And I feel like any topic of conversation is just going to turn into a back and forth of comedy. And I, I think that sounds like a fun book club. So that you, does. You think Hugh Jackman is a, is a Hobbit fan? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I do. Mm. If I could do a celebrity book club right now, there would only be one person invited. And that person would be head coach Bill Belichick. And what would the book we'd be reading? Well, it's called How to Build an Offensive Line. I don't know if that is a book. Maybe I'll be the one to write it. But yeah, Bill Belichick. And we're reading How to Build an Offensive Line. I don't know sports, but I feel like this is a snarky answer. Am I wrong? Same. Okay. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that well, I feel like I've heard I watched a Patriots documentary, and I mean, isn't Tom Brady like on the offensive line, or is he uh, somewhere else? Oh, JJ. <laughs> oh, JJ. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's a quarterback. And a quarterback is not on the offensive line, he's behind the offensive line. Anyway, uh, we'll talk later about this because this is going to be a long conversation. There'll be many X's and O's. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be something for like, that's going to be like a subscribers only, members only conversation, which is JJ Learn Sports. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do, do Trish Learn Star Wars. It's going to be right. so much fun. <laughs> okay, so I would invite Prince Harry. And then it's a toss up because he's got a book out, but so does his wife, Megan. So I think I would go with the controversial choice, which is Megan's book, purely mm. so then I can like uh, question him about what he thinks about certain aspects that she's written or um, fact check it. Uh, it'd be super awkward, but I think it'd be really fun. <laughs> so again, I think it's more of a, an in depth interview, but. That's that's a good choice. I think Prince Harry would be interesting either to have in a book club or to, to have. I, I would like to sneak in a psychiatrist to that book club mm. just to like to try to help him out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm smart. But I get very confused. I'm not sure which is which. But but I think that Harry and Meghan, they're the couple that live in California now, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. As far away from Britain as you can get in America. <laughs> they made their own Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, it is time for us to vote. You can vote for your favorite answer. And just remember that the top voted answer makes it to the final round and could be our champion of the week. Vote in chat by typing vote space and the number of the answer that you think is the most awesome. You know, maybe you like a snarky answer like Bill Belichick's how to build an offensive line. <laughs> an offensive line. 
if there ever was one. <laughs> Tabitha Let's wants see. to have a royal family. Let's see. What did you guys say? Ooh. So yeah, the diverse book group, you know, everybody's bringing different point of view, certain different expertise, and then maybe we can really get, you know, into the depth of, but you're going to have to find a book that, that like these guys can use their tools on. It's got to have mathematics. It's got to have cannabis. It's got to have uh, music and poetry. It's going to have, you know, philosophy. It's got to have some ethical dilemmas in there too. So uh, maybe, maybe Lord of the Rings. Wait, Brendan Naff was the one, uh, he talked about huge, it was Hugh Jackman, Ryan Gosling, and Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, you're still right, though. I feel like Hugh Jackman is like the theater guy. Mm -hmm. Ryan, Go uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds is like the superhero guy. Jake Gyllenhaal does a lot of grounded dramas. So if you read like a movie book, that could be good. But I mean, I, I think his point was that you could read anything. You could be reading like, you know, the, the back of the of the New York Times, you know, the classified ads. And it would be funny because they are all like so amusing. Yes. Agreed. So, good answer. That's a good yeah. one. Nice job, Brandon. Yes. And we will see you in the final, final round for today. But now, viewers, I turn it over to you. We have a poll for this question. Which of these celebrities would you most want in your book club? Tim Cook, founder of Apple. Nope. Current no. CEO of Apple, Emma Watson, Margot Robbie, or Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker. So Margot Robbie is an interesting choice. Barbie. Mm -hmm. Aha. <laughs> uh, yeah. And also uh, Harley Quinn. Yes. Oh, right. She's great. She's great. I bet she's got a lot of depth. I don't know yeah. her. I'd yeah. like to know her. <laughs> She's Maybe the book club will be a good chance for us to have a glass of wine and get to know one another, you know, have some cheese, read the book. I agree yeah. with the fans. Should be a good choice. True. Well, that was an incredible set of answers. I cannot wait to uh, go to the final round and see how Brandon does. But I think it's time we move on to the next question of the week. I think now we are at two. No, Monday's question. We're on Monday's question. Monday. Monday's question was, if you could be a part of any TV friend group, which would it be? And it doesn't have to be just friends, guys. It can be any TV friend group. Oh, I think... I think I, I think the answer that you said, Trish, friends, is like a pretty popular answer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think I would really vibe with the Dairy Girls. <gasps> I was pretty good. Yes, I recently finished that show and just they are hilarious together. And also like when it really counts, they are like there for each other. So I think I think they're just perfect. I can't think of a better one. JJ, you got me hooked on that. I had never heard of Dairy Girls until you told me about it. It's a, it's oh. a great series. Yeah. I, have you finished the series? I don't want to spoil it. Mm -mm. No, don't say anything. Right. I haven't finished. All right. Well, any I thought it was great, too. I'm, since I've already added myself as a geek, I'm going to go with the original Star Trek, like the little, the, the triumvirate there, Kirk, Spock, and, uh, and McCoy. Oh. They were, the, they were, they were like the perfect friends representing, you know, the best part of humanity, even though Spock wasn't human. That's a, that's really original. I like that answer. Yeah. They would also be good in a book club. And on a zombie apocalypse survival squad. <laughs> so it would be very handy to have them as friends, no matter what you need. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate friend group. The, if you can't be friends with a good zombie apocalypse survival squad, it's not even worth being friends with them, to be honest. Yeah. It's like, well, why, why survive the apocalypse? <laughs> Unless you can have, you know, good people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I think that's, the, the, I think you and I both have some really great answers but now I think it's time to get some answers from the fans. So fans, we ask you, which TV friend group would you want to join in? Okay, so a friend group from TV that I'd want to be part of, freaking love The Office. So I can be a part of like Michael Scott's friend group. I love his sense of humor. I think I would have a blast with that. Yeah. I feel like she means Steve Carell and not Michael because oh. nobody's really friends with Michael Scott. 
Right, but he's he, so yeah. yeah, he's, he's a lot. But so narcissistic. Would you rather be friends with Michael Scott or Angela? The weird cat lady who's like such a downer. Take uh, Michael Scott, right? Yeah, same. Yeah. I don't think she's such a downer. Isn't she the one who got engaged to Dwight? She was like, she was yeah. like yeah. Yeah. She's with Dwight. Yeah. She's down. I was just reading about her hidden pregnancy. Uh, in real what? life? Yeah. So in the show, she was pregnant, but they shot around it. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I'm sure she's a very nice person. I was just sort of an annoying character, but I loved everyone else on the show. Same. Yeah. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. If I could be a part of any TV friend group, I would pick the Big Bang Theory because mm. it seems like they're a fun group, friend group to be in with. And if I had to pick one, it would be done. And that's it. You're not the only geek on board today, Keith. <laughs> Apparently. That's a great show, too. And they're real friends. Well, they're, they're friends, but there, there's a certain amount of like jealousy amongst the group. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like that's just part of like the the geeky scientist dynamic is they're just like ribbing at each other's professions constantly. Yeah, good show. Yeah, good show. Yeah, they. I would be friends with all those guys. We would go to Star Trek conventions together. We'd have a great time. <laughs> I uh, I don't feel like I need to explain this one. Like, why wouldn't you? Look at that little boy. That's Beemo right there. That's my group. That's my pals. Oh yeah. And I'm coming back in. That is an animated <laughs> show on Cartoon Network called Adventure Time. It's like kind of a kid's show, um, but I agree. It's like they all have like really wild personalities. And I was like, they're just all very, because it's an animated show, you have like a robot. There's like a character made entirely out of bubble gum. There's a vampire. It's it's like a wild amalgamation of characters, but it'd be fun. You they cannot be like friends with them. They're not real. They're just but, made up. You can't be friends with them. You never I mean, had an imaginary friend growing up? Yeah, but he's made of bubble gum. How are you going to be friends with somebody who's made out of bubble gum? Far better to be friends with Spock. He's a Vulcan. <laughs> because he, he's real. He's real. Like, he's a person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I would choose to be in the Phineas and Ferb from here. Phineas and Ferb come up with the craziest adventures, and I would love to be a part of their everyday shenanigans. Well, what are they? <laughs> They're people. Are they people? Okay, fine. Then. Yeah, respect. <laughs> They're animated. Oh, you're okay with animation. You're just not okay with not people. Yeah, you can't be friends oh. with somebody made of bubble gum. Okay. Well, can you? I mean, one of the characters at Adventure Time is a dog. So you, I think you could be friends with that. Can I dog. ask you a question, JJ? Are you friends with your dog? Yeah. Then the yes, you can be friends <laughs> with a <the> dog. <laughs> Score. <laughs> My friend group would be Scooby-Doo and the gang. Growing up, I used to watch this show religiously. You have a talking dog, you have a bunch of friends who are going to have your back, and you get to go on a bunch of adventures and beat bad guys. So, in my eyes, what else could you want? And, you know, Velma needs a friend, mm -hmm. right? Because Daphne's got Fred, right? And Scooby's got Shaggy. Poor Velma. So, yeah. Go in there, you'd be best friends with Velma. Fill in that final seat in the mystery van. That's a good answer, yes. I think. So if I could be a part of any TV friend group, I would choose to be a part of the Friends TV show friend group. I mean, you have a mixture of all different types of personalities and people, and I mean, just seem like a cool bunch. So yeah, that's why I would choose. So I don't want to harp on this too much, but one of the best parts about being friends with the friends friends group is that you just could have the most awesome apartment in New York. And I mean, it's fine if you just pretend to be a friend with them because, you know, apartments are hard to get in New York. Those are great. Yeah. They had a balcony. It's like awesome. <laughs>
Yeah. Unrealistically great. Yeah. But their balcony also looked at, there was like somebody on the other side of that who was like always naked. The naked guy. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with that? That was a bonus. <laughs> Big bonus. Yeah. And when, also when you take into account the fact that one of the people living in that apartment uh, was a barista, that is <laughs> like, they're lucky they literally didn't get a closet. And uh, as Gecko mentions, Monica was a chef. That, that, that's a coup to have a roommate who's a chef. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to vote. You can vote in the chat, my friends, by typing vote space and the number of the person corresponding to the answer that you thought was the best. Mm. Whose friend group do you want to like kind of try to like slide into? You know what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. Is mm -hmm. it going to be Scooby? Is it going to be the friends? Is it going to be Phineas and Ferb? It's going to be the like pretend people on adventure time. <laughs> Who knows? But you can tell us. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> Except for that one. The bubblegum gang. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. like it when the winning answer goes against everything that Keith said. I'm not sure fans vote that way intentionally, but I think it's funny. <laughs> Trish, 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 you're like texting them right now. They go, yeah, let's, let's like, call oh, Keith. Keep <laughs> let's, let's be contrary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the chat, vote five, vote five, vote five. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Chris. Anyway, you are our fan favorite. Yeah, and you go to the finals. Woo. Well, the congratulations. Yes, it's time for a poll. Viewers, we're turning it over to you. Which TV friend group would you be a part of? Are you like Shiv 12 and you want friends? Um, are you are you thinking The Office like Becca? Big Bang Theory like Way? Or The Golden Girls? Oh, The Golden Girls. They were also competitive. They were very much like, uh, like The Big Bang Theory. <gasps> friends. I, JJ, was this the most popular answer from all the videos submitted it feels like it was yeah i actually think it was the office oddly enough oh. i know that there were two people um uh, michael and becca who both said the office okay yeah. okay yeah but well, friends was also i think friends is also just a very popular answer because i mean it's called friends it's so. friends yeah 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 what about nobody said uh gilgan's island Oh, oh no! You know the problem is it was the the ages are too diverse. Like, who are you going to be friends with? You the gotta, like, biggest... Yeah, yeah. Like, no. The skip yeah. is so crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Gilligan's Island. It's also tough because they're on an island, so it's like you don't really have a choice but to be friends, like really close friends with everyone from Gilligan's Island, right? Yeah. Yeah. But wouldn't that be fun to like be like stranded on an island, all your closest friends and all the coconuts you can eat? <laughs> you know, I mean, when you put it like that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like well, exactly. And then we get rescued. That's perfect. Well, this was an incredible question. I think we can move right along to the next one, which is from Tuesday. Ooh, Tuesday's question was. Who would you like to believe that you were in a past life? You know, it's a really good question. And I got to say that I feel, well, let me say first off, it's like, I don't really believe, you know, and I know people have a hard time with this one. So we're just going to pretend mm -hmm. that what if you were like in a past life, somebody, and I feel like in this life, I'm sort of doing a penance, right? This life is hard. So I'm thinking that in my past life, I must have been like somebody super carefree. And I'm thinking maybe this guy right here, right? This is Joe Namath, also known as Broadway Joe. And he was a quarterback for the uh, AFL and then NFL New York Jets. And he won the Super Bowl. It was the first Super Bowl from a, a, an AFL team. And, but he was more than that. He was like famous for being kind of like a carefree, fun guy. And you can tell this is him on the sidelines wearing his trademark fur coat because that was it. He was the guy who would just kind of do anything. He was super casual. And then he went on and he had this great career in TV. He was on both um, the A-Team and also on um, Fantasy Island. 
And so that just is like the hallmark of a great life. Of course, he's still alive. Right? You, you may see him on TV from time to time. But, um, but yeah, I, that's who I would want to be is Joe Namath. Joe Namath mm. had a time in New yeah. York City. <laughs> yeah, he was like rocking the social scene. And they were like, listen, you're not supposed to drink. You're not supposed to stay out late. You're not, you know, supposed to have these big parties. And he was like, I'm Broadway Joe. Whatever, man. Yeah. yeah, I think he also did a country album. It's like the trifecta. He'd been on the A-Team, he made a country album, and uh, he was uh, actually in an off-Broadway version of Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, True that? Interesting. He said it all. Yeah. All right. That's a great answer. Yeah. Oh my God, wait. Good luck to guy's... anybody else who's not Joe Nabeth. <laughs> How do you live up to that? And look at him. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Well, I think with that, I think we should get into some fan answers. Let's see if anyone can live up to Joe Namath, Broadway Joe. So fans, who the would challenge. you like to believe you were in a past life? The challenge. <laughs> I'd like to believe that in my past life, if I had a past life, that I was someone very outspoken and that used their voice for change. I've always been a very confident woman and believed in speaking up on what I felt was right and speaking out about inequality and hopefully I was someone strong back then, a strong woman back in my past life as well. Maybe someone that was a part of the Black Panther movement or so maybe someone in politics. Who knows? So she didn't want to be somebody who was too far off of what her core personality is. I think that's she, good. She's, she's been inspired, but she's carrying forward this single person thing. Right? Isn't that what most people think of when they when they look at this question? Would you say? Yeah, what agree. they aspire think, to, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, the what they want the most, how they most want to live their life is who they think they were in a past life. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know too much about history, um, but there is one person I remember reading about in middle school named Deborah Sampson who during the Revolutionary War disguised herself as a man so that she could fight in the army. Um, and she only left the army once she got um, injured and sick and her identity was found out. Um, but that's always stuck with me because of like what a brave person that is. And I try to emulate that sort of bravery into my life. I've never had a situation like that, but I, I'd like to think that um, I could be someone like that. Taking on both the patriarchy and the British. Yeah. yeah. You know, if she didn't know that much about history, she could have just said Mulan, right? Isn't that similar? Yes. Right? Yeah. She yeah. Both those things, too. Mm -hmm. True. Well, not the British. <laughs> In my past life, I think I'd probably be a farmer, uh, someone with just like nothing around for hundreds of miles, just basically planting stuff, working on the fields all day. Um, I feel like it's opposite of what I do now, but. That's what I feel like I did in my past life because, you know, that's what I wish right now I was doing instead of being in a crazy city. And like Gilligan's Island, that would be fun for about a week. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's whatever he resonates to. He strayed from the path laid out by his forebears. Oh. And so he's got to get back to the earth. Okay. I'm, I'm with little options. I think maybe I had the farm next door. A parrot. I repeat a lot of stuff like over and over and over again. So if I was a parrot, it'd make a lot of sense. <laughs> a parrot. Just okay. what is what? that even? What? It could be uh, a, a person made of licorice. <laughs> <laughs> In my past life, I would like to believe that maybe I was someone um, of royalty, maybe like a queen or a princess, maybe not super well known, but still lived like a very lavish life. And it was very powerful and like, like to have a lot of power. Um, I think that would be a super cool past life. To have. I'm trying to think of an example. So I was going to say, Princess Margaret, like we, not the top spotlight, not the queen, but right. her sister. But did you, would you say that she lived lavishly? Yeah. 
But but didn't Megan just say the opposite, like somebody who didn't live lavishly but had a lot of power? Because if you're going to go the opposite way, like did live lavishly and didn't have a lot of power, then yeah. And Or mm-hmm. uh, what's her name? Princess Stephanie Monaco? Monaco? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Monaco, you're so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I think about what I was in a past life a lot actually and i really think that i was like a bodhisattva um or like a monk because i always i don't know i just feel really drawn to like buddhism and taoism and i wasn't raised that way so i just think that i must have learned that in a different life yeah it's it's in some ways like ill options answer right she's drawn to something that is alien to her and why right because of her past life experiences yes very interesting what if you're drawn to evil (laughs) anyway guys it's time for us to vote who do you think that you were who would you like to think that you were in a past life maybe it was someone who fought for justice and who was very courageous or maybe it was somebody who just like worked the earth and was more in touch or maybe Somebody who would explain why you repeat things so much. That's what Zach said. Zach <laughs> thinks that he is a parrot, you know. And then I guess I got confused on the Megan thing, right? Princess Megan. Right. That has a nice <laughs> ring to it. That's like a. That's that sounds like um. Isn't there like a Disney show like Princess something? Yeah. Ah, yeah. the very strong, independent, possibly a uh, Black Panther. Mia, yeah. congratulations. That was a great answer. And you know what I love about her answer actually is that without being boastful, she's um, recognizing her strongest traits. You know, she's recognizing that she's got it going on in her own way and that she's got principles and that she sticks by them. I love her answer. Same. Yeah. And I think luckily everyone else did too. And that is why she is the winner for today's big show. Going to the final round. Yes, exactly. That, that part. So everyone, I think it's time to turn it over to you for your answers. Who would you be like to believe you were in a past life? Were you a medieval knight, an oracle, a politician, or like Zach, some sort of animal? Oh, there's no question. I was number two. I was an oracle. What's an oracle? Is that somebody that tells the future? Yes. Really? That's what I'm best at. Ooh, not a medieval knight, which was our winning poll answer. That's very interesting. Yeah. A knight, that's a tough life. Can nig it, as they say in Monty Python. Okay. Um, well, it's better than being like a, a, a serf or a peasant during that time, right? At least uh, like the knight had the option of washing their hands every once in a while. <laughs> right? Everybody else was just like, yeah, forget it. Just you're going to live down in the muck. But, but, uh, but yeah, I think that that would be a good, a very privileged position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, you bring up a good point because I feel like a past a certain point, no matter who you were, you were not cleanly. Because also, this is before germ theory. Yeah. Right. But but I, I would say the opposite, JJ, if you don't mind me disagreeing with you just a little bit here. I think that we, each of us, and everybody who's listening now, owes their life to the fact that some member of their family, like, buck the trend and wash their hands. Oh. Um. Right. They washed their hands and so they did not die of disease before they were able to procreate. And therefore, here we are. Yeah. In a past life, I would like to think I was somebody who washed their hands every once in a while. I yeah. think you're a problem solver. I feel like you would have been a great Oracle. beer brewer because people had to drink beer and wine, right? Because there was like dysentery in the water. So I feel like you would have made big social changes with having like the best brew in uh, Samaria. Yeah, they go, what do you call this? It's called an IPA. <laughs> Why do you call it an IPA? i probably not going to answer. <laughs> What'd you call this This wizard, wizardry? A black yeah. and tan? <laughs> it's like it's like the movie where the guy, like, he, like, goes back into a world where they didn't have Beatles songs yesterday. And then he just, like, invents all the Beatles songs. Everybody thinks he's amazing. I would be that guy inventing beer. And like, what do you call the substance? I go, well, what do you think it's called? <laughs> it's, it's a beer. Sour. 
It's just <laughs> sour, right? It's water <laughs> that washed its hands. Just yeah, drink. but you'd have to wash your hands if you were a brewer. You can't make a good beer unless you're very, 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 very clean. True. Tip of the day, kids. Yes. <laughs> QOTDs, lesson of the day, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yes. Forget about everything else you heard today. Just remember <laughs> that one thing. Just wash your hands. Yes. Well, with that, I think we can move on to the next question, which I think we alluded to it a little bit before, but it's Wednesday. This is a great question. We got a lot of answers for this one. If you were a celebrity kid, who would you want your parents to be? Uh, I've thought about this my whole life. <laughs> but today, I'm going to go with Blake Lively and the wonderful Ryan Reynolds, who has been mentioned before in this show. Um, they're married. They have children. They're completely down to earth. Ryan Reynolds is hilarious when it comes to pranking his wife and they're both really open about the challenges of raising children so if i were their child i think i'd definitely have a sweet fund but i'd also have the advantage of being like actually raised by my rich parents and i think we do a lot of normal kid activities like camping and exploring you know like the west village in new york i foot so they just like like left Los Angeles, right? Because they just thought it was just too hard to raise kids there. Yeah, they're in the West Village. Oh, they moved to New York. Yeah. They're, they're keeping it real. Yes. <laughs> really real. <laughs> I used to live in the West Village. It's a great place. It's a fantasy land. <laughs> it's just it's just a different fantasy land. It's a fantasy land with better pizza, which is oh, nice. Oh, sure. <laughs> Uh, and now I know that I kind of want to go to the West Village. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We, we can direct you to the best. This place called Ray's. You may have heard of it. Best pizza <laughs> in the world. <sighs> World's best. Send me the address. Send me the address. <laughs> well, I think we got some really great answers from fans from throughout the week to this question. And I think, Trish, someone in this set of answers agrees with you. So I think without further ado, let's ask you fans, if you were a celebrity kid, who would your famous parents be? Hmm. I choose Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart because uh, I want to be a filmmaker. And, you know, I could choose Martin Scorsese or like Steven Spielberg, but um, I probably wouldn't get along with them. You know, we'd probably bicker. But Dwayne Johnson, I could chill with that guy. I, I could chill with Kevin Hart. Oh, yeah. Me and my gay parents. That'd be, that'd be chill. The Rock is living large on our show today. Yeah. yeah. So The Rock, very natural parent, I think. You know, I mean, if you've seen uh, the Tooth Fairy, for instance, you can see how he would get into it. But Kevin Hart, I guess he's got, he must have kids. Hilarious. He's yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. The celebrity kid I would love to be is Steve Irwin. I would love to be one of his kids. I've seen what his kids are doing. They're really honoring his legacy. They seem so well-rounded and they seem nice. And they seem really about the mission that their dad had originally set out. And they just look very well-rounded and happy and like they love each other. And I would love to be a part of that family dynamic. Don't they have silly names, though? Bindi? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> What's weird about Bindi? Maybe it's, it's perfectly normal in Australia. Tabitha, right. <laughs> can you let us know? Yeah. <laughs> Where's tabs when you need her? <laughs> mm, I think if I had to choose, I would choose Will and Jada. Will and Jada Smith. I think they're super cool. Um, they're misunderstood, um, super controversial, and they just seem like cool parents. They seem like they don't always go with the norm, um, and their kids seem not weird, but very cool. Weird and cool at the same time. Um, and yeah, they just seem like they'd be just fun to hang with. I could talk to if they were my parents. They seem relatable. Um, and they just seem fun to be with, even though they would be my parents. I think I would want to hang with them. So, um, so yeah, I think I would choose Will and Jada Smith. They seem fun. I got nothing to say about that. I, I, Will Smith is like, I, I find him not like a compelling person. Jada, Jada Smith, I don't know that well. If I just feel like he's gone downhill since they've been married, mm -hmm. and he's and he's good to his kids. Jade is not a great actor, though. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just going to say it. Easy, because I think about this way too much. If <laughs> I were a nepotism baby, my parents would be Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel. Because they are like such a powerhouse couple. They have unlimited money. And you could literally get into any entertainment industry you wanted to with those as your parents. Like, the wrong reason. They produce music, movies, television. They have charities. Like, they do everything. And everyone knows them. And, like, they also seem really nice. So, yeah, Justin Timberlake, Jessica Beale, so that I could be a movie star or a musician without really even having to be talented. I could just do it because my parents do it. The easy life of being a Nepo baby. Yeah, maybe some talent would come along with that, Aaron, though. That'd yeah. Be good. That would also be nice to have. Cross your fingers. Could it be the Obamas? Then it's just afternoon driveway hoops with Barack. And then a, a delicious, healthy meal with Michelle, mom and dad. And then they're off working on their books. And I'm just tooling around the house with all the money and past fame. That's the best. Tooling around the house with the money. <laughs> like, like in a wheelbarrow or something. Yeah. <laughs> My parents Sprinkling it in the fish tank. Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively, without hesitation. You're basically guaranteed to be attractive unless you get that one in 100 chance that you're not and that is what it is but you could even be in marvel movies at some point you get cool parents uh you're not going to be named north or chicago <laughs> bindi so uh, how could you not <laughs> pick these two <laughs> i didn't even think about the uh being attractive part of it. My God, they are super pretty people. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he appreciates being called pretty. <laughs> <laughs> You're very pretty, Ryan. Yes. <laughs> well. What do you say, guys? It's time to vote. Let's send one of these people to the final round. You can send them to the round by voting for them. In the chat, just type vote space and the number of like one of these awesome answers blake lively very popular uh -huh. chris rock why didn't anybody say chris rock and dwayne the rock that right. way you would already have the monograms like all set out for the towels the rocks yeah exactly <laughs> the rocks family yeah guess what Trish wins. Trish is going to the, oh, I'm sorry. Hector's going to the final <laughs> round. <laughs> what an amazing answer that was, Hector. It's You're great. whispering in Hector's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively would be his parents if he were a Nepo baby. Congratulations, Hector. Yeah, really great answer. I think now we can turn it over to the fans and see if they agree with you and Hector. Who would your celebrity parents be? Is it Beyonce and Jay-Z? The Kardashians uh, would be your mom, I guess. Michelle and Barack Obama, like Jay Gish said. Or for your dad, are you thinking social media mogul, Mark Zuckerberg? Mm. And Beyonce and Jay-Z it is. So Michelle and Barack, I'm a little surprised. Yeah. What, you thought that they would win the poll? Yeah, because, you know, just, they've got like, it, it's more than being cool. They're cool. They're good looking. They've accomplished so much. They're very wealthy. They've like got the, like the moral high ground. Yeah. You know, you feel so good about yourself every day. And those kids seem like, I don't know, normal-ish. I think so. It's like the I Bush kids so. also seemed like very normal, which is shocking. It, because well, they start with so much money and so much power and like right. so you know security around them all the time and then it was like yeah jenna's getting in trouble again right <laughs> like and any I kid sasha went through the same thing like there was a photo of her like smoking a cigarette it's like she's a college student yeah. <laughs> you know dad smoked cigarettes too in the white house for goodness sakes that's right that's yeah. right kids will be kids yeah exactly yeah yeah but I can also to anybody who's like relatively normal after going through one of these like political families or any kind of like super famous family. 
I, I think it's hard. And, and hats off to the parents, I should say. True, true. Celebrity parents, we salute you. <laughs> Well, I think it is time. We have actually one more question for the week, and this is today's question of the day. Very this, exciting. We wanted you guys to tell us what reality show would you totally win? QOTD, the question of the day show, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. I honestly, I haven't submitted an answer. I think I could give some good answers for this show. So everyone watch out. When I start submitting answers, it's over for you all. Um, but the real answer is, I think I would do really well at Love is Blind, that show on Netflix, because um... I feel like I fall in love. I would fall in love so easily, but I'd also know exactly what to say to get like the most airtime. Um, and then I would also like tell my person, I was like, listen no matter what happens we have to like get married at the end of this and then like afterwards do whatever but i feel like during the show we have to like i feel like we should get married at the end but do you get in trouble i mean do they catch you if you like just faking it do you have to That's like give good... the money back if you don't stay married um i actually i don't think you have to give the money back i don't even know if there's like money i think the real the win is just you get married and then supposedly you like have this like storybook marriage Huh? Maybe. Maybe that. Yeah. Don't worry. I have a plan. I have a plan. You're gonna when you see me on like but season you, eight yeah. of Love is Blind, Blind, you'll be like, oh, he's gonna he's gonna do well on this. But so you're like gonna go into your your marriage and your lifetime romance in essentially the way that somebody goes into Survivor. <laughs> Just whatever it takes, man. Whatever right. It takes. <laughs> hey, basically, love is ruthless. Love is blind and love is ruthless. Yeah. So true. That's so yeah. true. We don't have to tell the audience about that, how difficult it can be. <laughs> Famously. Uh, well, I think that's my answer, but I know that a lot of people have a very wide variety of reality shows they think they'd win. So users, we're going to ask you, what reality show do you think you would absolutely decimate? If I was a cartoon, I would totally win full drama out. I feel like I have the ingenuity to do it, you know? Yeah, the glitch can have to fly on the radar. I'm not getting anyone to pose for that. But yeah, I would I totally win full drama eye if it was a cartoon. And I'm pretty sure that comes as a reality show because it was like a reality show, wasn't it? But yeah, that is one that I would win. Total Drama Island. It was about as much of a reality show as Scooby Doo. It was very similar in the reality show ness. <laughs> uh, I think I would potentially win Family Feud. I've always liked that show, and it yeah. seems easy. It seems like you'd be able to figure out what uh, a lot of people think an answer is for something, um, usually common answers. Uh, I think I'd win that. That's a great answer. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some of the clips from that show, and the I think there's a famous one where it's like, name a four-letter reptile, and the person's like, alligator. <laughs> 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 so as long as you can like keep a level head, you can do well in this game. Yeah, good answer. I would totally win The Bachelor. I'm very good at first impressions, I think. And um, yeah, I would play the game. I would play the game. I haven't known Allie very long, but I think she's great. Yeah. I think she's right. Yeah. An actor. You can act as if you are in love if need be. That's right. <laughs> so I definitely win Love Island because I fall in love very quickly. And if the right person was also there with me, um, even if he wasn't forever, I feel like we'd be together for the whole show. So maybe well, you, you young people are so cynical. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's entirely cynical. I mean, the whole plot of the show is like falling in love. So I feel like there's gotta be some connection, but it's also just knowing that a lot of reality, reality show couples just don't stay together. You know, well, that's what I mean by cynical. Right? <laughs> like we're, we're trying to like, like this aspirational romance where you meet somebody and you fall in love and it's just so perfect, right? That's the, that's what they're selling. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, in real life, it's, it's kind of hard. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, so you're, you're just, just dumping on all the hard work of real people in the world with the simple <laughs> attitude. You got, you got. <laughs> I would say the real housewives of Atlanta, although I do follow the one from Beverly Hills, but Atlanta is the, the one that I follow the most. So this is the real world total drama island, by the way. That's what sure. you're... I think the the real the uh, total drama island is like it's a competition show. I think Real Housewives is just sort of a reality show. But drama. so I guess the way that yeah, like Big Brother. There's no, there's no prize. Yeah, you just got to stay there. But I think, and even with Real Housewives, there isn't really a competition. It's just people living their lives. So I guess you win by like. Coming they've out already of, like, getting won. ad deals. What <laughs> they've already won. They're right. all, exactly. They're they're sort of they're very wealthy, kind of miserable people. I mean, maybe right. not maybe not the Housewives of Atlanta, but some of the other shows. They don't seem all that happy. Yeah, because it's it's highly competitive for a show with no prize and no sort of end game. Like it's a constant competition for. <gasps> who's because life is a competition. Life shouldn't be a competition. But if but, but him, that's why we're so much better than them. Right? Yeah. That we're so much better than them because they look at life as a competition. And maybe because of that, they've gotten all of this wealth. But are they happy? I don't think so. No. Not like us. Right. Yes. <laughs> a reality show that I would totally win is definitely MasterChef. Just kidding. Um, but um, I don't watch a lot of reality shows, but... It's always been a fantasy of mine to be able to compete on Master Chef one day. Maybe chopped. Yeah. But you see that in his subtitle. He likes food. He likes food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with him. Maybe then the the good show is is it cake? Because then you're like you have to judge whether someone looks like something looks like food or it isn't. Right. So it's not like for people who are good cooks, but like if you know your way around food. There you go. See, this mm. is why British baking is so great. Oh, it's so good. Right? The food's really good. They're terrible cooks. Anybody could do it. And so I totally relate. And then they get better by the end. Mm -hmm. It's competition, but it's it's very sort of supportive competition. Yeah. 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 So what you're saying is the real winner of a reality show is when you become the host of a cooking show. Yes. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice. Well. It is time to vote. What is the reality show that you would totally crush at? Mm. You can vote in the chat by typing vote space and the number of one of these guys. Maybe it's some kind of cooking show. Maybe it's some kind of cartoon based fake reality show, or maybe it's actually a real reality show. That's also a fake reality show. Like maybe love Island, right? Or real housewives, which is real, but not real, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, good. I think like this is a. Hmm. Oh, we got a winner. Family Feud survey says you're yeah, the You know, game shows, right? Game shows are reality TV. They're maybe realer. Do you guys watch Password? With oh, a, you mean the new. The uh, new yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it last night for the very, very first time. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, right? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy, are you sure? I don't know. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel was a guest star on it. Uh, maybe but that was it's the episode I saw. Jimmy Fallon show, and it, I think it's fantastic. But you, did you see it like back in the day? I Password? don't remember it back in the day. I can't imagine it being as amusing as it is today. But was it? No, no, it was much more serious. Okay. You know, now it's it's much more intimate, and it's you know, it's yeah, a little risque sometimes. It's a really good show. You guys should check it out. So okay, yeah, mind. game shows. I like game shows. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in my I'll put that one in my uh, DVR, my watch Price list. Is right. It's another good oh, one. good one, good one. Okay. But but are you a uh, are you a Bob Barker guy or are you a Drew Carey guy? With I, I am most definitely a Drew Carey guy. Yeah, yeah. It's just less of a circus. Right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's time we turn it over to our viewers and we ask them. Not about the host question, not about your carry, but which reality show would you win? Are you a deal or no deal kind of person? Survivor, Big Brother, or The Bachelor? Deal or no deal, stressful. I don't know if I could do that. 
That's like a lot of pressure. Yeah. But it's also like, isn't that all based on luck? Oh. Pretty much. Survivor. Good golly. I that's would a real. Dead. That's a hard show. Yeah. I don't think I could do that one. Oh, I'd rather be on alone where you're on an island with like nobody and you're starving to death than be on Survivor with all the social yeah. anxiety. Yeah. yeah. I feel like with alone, it's a lot easier because it's just yourself. I feel like a lot of people think they could like beat other people on Survivor. They really couldn't. I'll yeah. be honest. All you got to do is outsmart a bear or two. <laughs> exactly. A pack of wolves. You know what? It's the insects I can't take. Okay. Being, well, just being eaten alive night after night would would that would make me raise the web. web make flag it afraid not waste. for you. <laughs> no, I'm not about it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, we've actually gone through all of the questions for the week. So that means there's only one thing left to do. <gasps> Ooh, now it's gonna be the winners round. This is the time where we're going to select the very best answer of the week and crown your QOTD weekly champion. Remember, guys, you got all week to submit your own answers to today's QOTD or any of our other super duper questions from beyondtheair.com. All right. So I think that what we're going to do now is do a recap of yeah. all of the answers. And this is not all the all the answers. These are all the ones that you voted for in the prior rounds as being the best of the best. This is the best answer to each question. And now we're going to run them all off. And you get to pick the number one answer, which will be our champion of the week. Let's hit it. Yes. Well, we're going to start with reading my favorite book of all time, which is The Hobbit. And I don't know everyone who would, I would want in the book club, but I definitely would want Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman because those two are hilarious. To, oh, maybe Jake Gyllenhaal, too. Those three, pretty funny together. And I feel like any topic of conversation is just going to turn into a back and forth of comedy. And I... I think that sounds like a fun book club. And you were going to leave Blake Lively out, though. This is who would you want to have in your celebrity book club? I'd want Xena, Warrior Princess, because she's fierce and, you know, she's pretty to look at. Yeah, I'm what celebrity would you like? Here. What celebrity would you like to have on your zombie apocalypse survival squad? Yeah, Xena. Uh, I think I would. Potentially win Family Feud. I've always liked that show, and it seems easy. It seems like you'd be able to figure out what uh, a lot of people think an answer is for something. Um, usually common answers. Uh, I think I'd win that. Yeah, if you were a rally, reality TV star, like what reality show would you totally win? Family Feud, he says. I... uh I don't feel like I need to explain this one. Like, why wouldn't you? Look at that little boy. That's BMO right there. That's my group. That's my pals. Oh, yeah. And for question number four, it is like, what TV friend group would you totally want to be a part of? And Chris says he wants to be on Adventure Time. Yes. My parents would be Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively without hesitation. You're basically guaranteed to be attractive unless you get that one in 100 chance that you're not, and that is what it is. But you could even be in Marvel movies at some point. You get cool parents. Uh, you're not gonna be named North or Chicago. So uh, how could you not pick these two? If you got to pick your famous parents and you were going to be a Nepo baby, who would it be? Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, totally. I'd like to believe that in my past life, if I had a past life, that I was someone very outspoken and that used their voice for change. I've always been a very confident woman and believed in speaking up on what I felt was right and speaking out about inequality and Hopefully I was someone strong back then, a strong woman back in my past life as well. Maybe someone that was a part of the Black Panther movement or maybe someone in politics. Who knows? Yeah. Who would you like to think that you were in a past life? Mia says she's some kind of activist. Somebody really stood up for what they believed in. Maybe Black Panther. Maybe the Black Panther. 
My first celebrity crush was Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement and I had my entire bedroom wall just like completely covered in photos and things that I got from magazines that I convinced my parents to buy and <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't admitted this but I may have been known for kissing a poster or two of my time. Um, good old 12-year-old tubs. So who was your first celebrity crush? Tabitha said it was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, it's time for us to vote. We have gone through all the seven answers. Guys, go into the chat and vote for your favorite answer. Who do you think was the best? I am now staring at a picture of Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And <laughs> he was super <laughs> cute as a kid. Yes. <laughs> oh my god you're just yeah you gotta you gotta know what you're working with you know you gotta know what you're voting for yeah born oh. september 8th 1981 mia yeah you, finally you're it that is our favorite answer for the week as voted for by our fans thank you so much for participating yeah, so that was really exciting. So this was a week that was all about celebrities. I mean, I hope that you got your full of celebrities and stars and just kind of the aspirational greatness that it comes from being famous and wealthy and beautiful and talented and all that sort of stuff. I know, I got my full. So now we are heading into a new week and there's going to be a new set of questions. And by a new set of questions, I mean every day you get a new question of the day, that's the name, and you can get it right in your inbox. If you click subscribe, that would be a great way to start off your week. And then you can be the first person to answer each of these questions. And maybe you will make it to the Thursday big show along with these champions like Mia V. So I guess to help us get started, Trish, like what is this week all about? Well, next week's theme is mm -mm music. We're talking about our favorite musicians and songs in honor of Coachella 2024. So that is really exciting. I, I, I guess that if I were going to be a celebrity, if I were to be famous, I would like to be a musician. I think that would be great because not only do you get the wealth and the power and the partying, but uh, you also have like, you know, the, the depth and artistry of like, making something which is great and maybe even lasting, you know, yeah. if you're not a one hit wonder, but that would be really, really great. So I'm looking forward to it, but, but like, what? I want to start thinking about my answers now, Trish, like, can you just like spill the, spill the tea as they say, like, what's our first question? Well, tomorrow's question is what was your most memorable concert ever? So this could be like your best concert ever or a total disaster. We're looking at you, Fire Festival survivors. Or it could be just a sweet combination of like a venue and an artist that evokes some of your favorite memories. Oh, wow. If, yeah, if someone went to Fire Festival, I <laughs> highly encourage you to respond to this question. Um, this question will actually be available tonight at midnight on qotd.beontheair.com. So just remember, you can play QOTD anytime. You can watch, vote, record, or play any of other any of our other Beyond the Air games over on the website and on YouTube. But I, yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. And then, you know, if you guys haven't recorded yet, then like now is the time. It's super easy. Mm -hmm. And you see exactly what it is. It's 15 seconds of saying what's on your mind. I really love it. Uh, I guess the reason why I like it so much is that people are sharing a little bit with them of themselves with us. Uh, and, and I, I just find that like very kind of, I don't know, connecting, like we, yeah. we're, we're not just living on the other side of like a computer tube, right? We're, we're actually kind of in this thing together. So share your thoughts. So for all the guys who answered this week, like, thank you so much for sharing now that you know my reasons. Uh, it really is very, very special when uh, you guys kind of tell us a little bit about yourselves through these answers. Yeah. And if you haven't answered yet, now is the time because we just can't wait to see you on TV. No, we can't. Bye, everyone. Have good days. Bye.